wobbling too much and how to fix the attention <coughs> now the quality of attention changes according to the state of your evolution for example in an animal so where is the attention placed in the human being it is not a fixed point you can say attention is the surface or the edge of awareness wherever we are made aware the attention gets diverted to that point if you can find from an analogy all the five of iron have got a power to be attracted towards a magnet <coughs> where is that power you cannot look it it is all over wherever the magnet is placed the files are attracted our attention is also like that that wherever we are attracted our attention goes there it is existing in the whole body in the sense that it can be diverted anywhere outside the body also inside the body in case if there is any pain or there is any trouble it floats over the nerves it floats over the whole nervous system but there is a controlling center in the brain if it is hit then we can remain conscious but without any attention also if somebody is hit on the vishuddhi chakra it can happen it can happen even in the lower chakra if somebody is hit that portion will lose its attention because you cannot feel in that part the difference is this that you can pay attention to those points if you want to even if they are numbed for example if my hand is numb i can pay attention to that means i can look at it i can think of it but there is a point in our being if that is it then we cannot even think you are just lying unconscious is it but eyes are open <coughs> hands are moving legs are moving that point is 
at the point of a Shuddhi Chakra here. And uh, if you can draw a line from here to the point where is the Pitha of Shuddhi Chakra is inside, inside the brain. Along that line, if you are hit anywhere, you become attentionless. You cannot pay attention anymore. <clears throat> this line passes through also Agya Chakra. Because when this point is connected with Vishuddhi Chakra at the back, in here and at the Pitha inside, <coughs> there a kind of a triangle is formed. And all this line or this area can affect your attention. Your heart is moving your limbs are moving, but you are not paying attention anywhere. <coughs> so when you pay attention to something, actually you pay attention Normally, when you are not realized through your brain centers, after realization, you can pay attention through your other centers also. You do pay. This is a very big difference between a person who is realized and who is not realized. <coughs> or you can say that you can become effective through your other centers by paying attention to them. You can feel the centers which are obstructed in your body, which you never felt before. Not only that, but you can feel the centers of other people. That means your central nervous system is being blessed by a new awareness by which it can convey to you, communicate to you the attention paid by your centers and also it can take your attention in a subtler way into the centers of others. <coughs> so first thing that happens to you is that your attention becomes subtler. Attention becoming subtler means you start understanding deeper things. For example, a bird can see a flower but cannot feel the beauty of a flower. And a unrealized person can see the beauty of a flower but cannot see the vibrations of the flower. So you become subtler, your attention become subtle. We definitely are at a higher evolutionary stage than the other people are. <coughs> now, we have to see how we use our attention.
you have seen even when you were not realized that supposing you start developing a an art in your hand from your very childhood then you develop the deftness of that particular art because a kind of a myelin sheath grows on the nerves in the same way <coughs> when you are realized i would say when you are a newly born person if you start respecting your attention then gradually you develop a deftness for surgery but so many people when they get realized they hardly come second time <coughs> even if they come second time they do not develop the feeling of vibrations more they still go on being busy with their day to day work wasting their attention on things which do not give you the settler feel so the subtleness the deftness of the art of sahaja does not develop for example i would say a person who is overweight as soon as he gets his realization he start telling it with what he has read this makes his attention again wasted as it is his attention has been fixed by these conventional ideas some of them are correct some are incorrect some some are absolutely wrong <coughs> some are useless some are only because they wanted to make money they have published some trash as soon as you get realization you go back to your own grows awareness and start telling this subtle with the gross you start again losing the vibration actually after getting the realization i have seen with small children they sleep for very long hours they become little inactive for some time but if an elder gets it he will immediately go to the book stall buy one book on kundalini and start reading about it <coughs> then some of you not understanding that you have become somebody else take it for granted all right mata ji has been very kind as she says i am par but how am i to believe as if by believing it they are going to give some money to me or i don't know what they are going to give i can see the vibrations coming but what's this of getting the vibrations why did she give us vibration again come back to the gross idea of utility because that's human nature has been so far to make everything into utility everything must be utilized to say man thinks no end of himself so he starts putting his realization into utility what utility it has how many people are going to get it what is going to happen what is the ratio what is the schedule what is this what is that you have been given this subtleness to enjoy like if you enjoy the beauty of flower 
we just tell you. Do we go to the books and find out how sh what should we do about this enjoyment of ours, how to enjoy this flower and then what to do and who has described about the flowers. So let us see if this is fitting into that. But it's done very commonly and I really don't know how to say it because it's such a foolish thing. And I'm only afraid that sometimes if I say they will feel hurt and as human beings are they get hurt for nothing at all, they are very foolish. Children are very sensible that way. Once they get it they start enjoying it, they just enjoy it, they just sleep off, they are not bothered. They think that something that is to be enjoyed, let us enjoy it. So at the very outset it happens like that. And a man doesn't know that how he has made himself even much more gross than he was ever in this Kali Yuga, in these modern times. <coughs> By organizing things according to his own ideas and conceptions, he's become so unnatural, so foolish, that discrimination between joy and ugliness he does not have. He is so confused. So first of all it is not only one reason but there are many reasons and as I describe to you inherently it is the human gross activities before realization. If you understand the disease from where it has come, sometimes it's easier to correct it. You cannot just correct the disease without understanding the history behind it. If you are a student of history, you will know how human beings have behaved. I mean, you just start wondering what's wrong with these people. God created one world. I mean, just think a person like me on coming on this earth. Suddenly you find there are so many countries being created. All right, create it. You can have separate countries if you cannot manage the whole world together. But then the fighting going on, killing each other, all kinds of problems or nothing at all. I mean, it's such a madhouse. So historically if you see how man has made himself mad, it's not <laughs> easy to compile all that in one lecture. <coughs> You'll have to write volumes. I think there are already written volumes. So there is historical background which has spoiled your attention. Physically, those who come for physical handicap or physical trouble or something like that because they are sick are sometimes little better than the people who do not have this because they definitely get the relief part of the joy. If they get the relief, there is a little shadow of joy that they feel and then they start understanding that it is to be enjoyed. But I would say, they too once they get the relief, they just disappear. Not understanding that there is something greater than this to be tasted and enjoyed. And the physical enjoyment in Sahaja Yoga itself is sufficient to keep your attention subtle. You do not have to fix your attention, but you have to get subtler and subtler in your attention. Fixing of, our, of your attention, as you know, is a very wrong method. That was done by some yogis and you know what is the result of that. 
their chakras were all broken and finished. When they fix their attention onto Agha Chakra, you have seen that Agha Chakra is broken. You are not to fix any attention, but you have to make your attention subtler and subtler. As I told you that a magnet, when brought, say, near the stones, nothing happens to the stones. They are just there. You move the magnet any way you like. But when you take it to the iron filings only, the filings are attracted towards the magnet. In the same way, the attention of a Sahaja should be so subtle that he should feel the vibrations. He should think of vibration. He should eat vibration, drink vibration and enjoy that. On the physical side, Many people tell me that we went to their house and they offered me laddus and I had to eat. What can you do, Mataji? Actually, you see, they felt attracted towards the shape of the laddus. They ate it. But they didn't see the vibrations of those laddus. They just ate it off and then they had a stomach trouble. <coughs> when they have a stomach trouble, then they said, Ma Mataji, we have lost our vibrations now. What to do? We ate the laddus. But if you had seen that there are no vibrations in that laddu, you should have said that today I am not supposed to eat anything or something like that and you should not have eaten that. If you see a born realized child, you will never eat. Even the mother beats the child, he says, oh, beat me, but I am not going to eat. Because they are not going to eat the filth. Such children are supposed to be very obstinate. They think they are obstinate. Because they know there is no vibration, so why should we eat? Because we are not going to enjoy it. So on the physical side, there are so many such mistakes you are committing. If you take to now, say, habits you have, supposing you have a habit of, say, pulling your hair. There was some lady who had a habit of pulling her hair and she used to become bald here, then bald here, then bald here. And the hair used to grow this side and she used to have a bald head here and she would pull her hair here. Such a person. So she came to me for treatment. Imagine. So I told her, why do you do like this? She says, now my attention is like that. It always starts uh, pulling my hair. I said, what to do such an attention you have got? So, you know, her elder sister used to beat her on her hand. Anytime she put her hand, she said, you must beat me. If you don't beat me, I'll beat you. But the beating was on and everybody used to look at them, what are they doing to each other? <laughs> and still she, she could not stop it. All habits are like this monkey business. All of them are like this. Because the matter is trying to sit on top of our attention all the time. And so we form habits. Certain habits are all right, convenient and convenient like that. I mean, some people to break habits, you know, they say will not sit on the ground, not sit on the chair. So where will you sit? We'll sit in a sitting pose and we'll practice that sort of thing. I mean, you need not do such a nonsense. I'm meaning that certain things are all right. Don't go to extremes. But certain habits that we acquire is mostly because of fashion. And <coughs> we start because somebody smoking, he forces you, he says, all right. And one bad habit we have got is not to say no to anyone. How to say no, you see, they were all drinking and they offered us drinks and uh, we said no, but they were just forcing us and it looked very bad, you know, not to drink and, <laughs> and they offered one cup, glass of drink to me and then I, I said, all right, I'll have very little sip, you know, one day and then I had it like that. And then my relations, you see, they came. <laughs> uh, they invited us for dinner and we had to go and then they started a cabaret dance, you know, and we had to see after all. It would look very bad not to see a naked woman. <laughs> oh, we are very innocent people, so we go on explaining what to do now, this is the society, this is the fashion, this is the style, this is how it is. But a Sahaja Yogi 
is a special one. He is a chosen one because you haven't got your own value. Tumala kimmat nahi swataji. You have not valued yourself as I have valued you. This is a fact which very few realize really that to get realization like this there must be something tremendous that Mataji must have done. She must have put in lot of labor to work this out herself. She must have done tremendous tapasyas in all her life. And even in this life she must have worked very hard day in and day out. And here we are when we get it, how commonplace the whole thing is, how we are about it. I thought by giving realization you will immediately see your value and you will think that you are something great and that you have got this realization and this sakshatka. But it is not so. And you start compromising with gross things in life. There is a huge populace which is to be led by one of you. One of you can lead all of them. Leaders do not compromise. Leaders do not solve the problem of the people whom they lead, but they give them problems to be solved. They stand above them. They are much above them. They do not compromise. They do not bend. Others bend before them. If the light starts falling and faltering on the roads, what will the person do who is carrying the light in the hand? You all are like the torches. And what kind of life you should have and a personality you should have, it is for you to decide. Thus the attention gets the priority. When you understand how your physical being, presence, this body of yours has to be clean, has to be beautiful, has to be soft, kind, has to be elegant, dignified. I have seen people in groups when we are sitting down behaving in manner, even an ordinarily educated ma person won't behave. The reason is you have not yet realized that you are the leader and people are watching. There should be kind of a musti in you, as they call it, musti. Should be satisfied with yourself. So, on the physical aspect, what you eat, what you see, what you like, the whole priorities must change. What should be most important is sahaj. In every circumstance, in every method, a habit, Sahaja. Sahaja means is born with you. Sahaja doesn't mean easy. Many people confuse. You have now got your right, that one was born with you. So now, children had come, 
उद्या या बरं का उद्या उद्या सो फॉर यू इट इज नेसेसरी टू नो दॅट यू आर अ सहजा अँड दॅट यू आर नॉट गोईंग टू ॲक्सेप्ट एनिथिंग दॅट इज असहज सहज मीन्स दॅट सहज मीन्स दॅट यू टेक द लाईट ऑफ सहज अबाव एव्हरीथिंग एल्स ओवर द डार्कनेस अँड नॉट टू ॲक्सेप्ट डार्कनेस इट इज असहज So how can you have any habits which give you sympathetic bondage? So that means you have a special subtle awareness. A king doesn't clean the streets. on the physical side your attention is lost like that because you indulge into all asahaj methods that you had before that others have you get lost into the asahaj system of life you have to change the complete system of the whole world in which people become sahaj and not asahaj then only the whole thing will become a sahaj for you <laughs> it is a big misunderstanding about sahaj yogi they think oh when it will come sahaj then we will do this work then we will go round and talk to people it should come sahaj nothing doing this is a very wrong attitude sahaj means that you have got the light of sahaj within you and how can you tolerate anything outside of your life is concerned means you must know what to dress up how to talk where to go whom to meet who are your brothers who are your sisters who are your sons and who are your parents that is how your attention is lost then your gross habits your old life that was there which has to be chiseled out has to be finished and you cannot go on because if you go on you will catch up here you will catch up there then you will break your neck you will come to me mother i have broken my back and this has happened that has happened it's paining i am getting hot i am getting headache i am doing this till you become sahaj it will go on working on you but why not become yourself for example a human being cannot sleep like a dog for example if he starts sleeping like a dog because there are all dogs around then he is going to get the pain in the same way if you are going to be asahaja because all are asahajas you are going to get into trouble because the dog doesn't feel though he might be getting pain but he doesn't feel it but you definitely feel it the person who is not yet reborn doesn't feel he gets the problem but he doesn't feel it you can feel it. and you jolly well have to give it up sooner the better if you don't give it up then you are again going back to the same darkness and this new darkness may be hellish can be terrible is better to die as human beings then because then you can go on being born again as animals is that but to be born again and knowing you go on back again to your former habits it can be very dangerous that's how i fix your attention with little fear into your mind to your subtler being the subtler being can only enjoy in the morning you did enjoy the meditation you had become subtler i pushed you down there but you have to keep yourself subtler by remembering by remembering what has happened how physically you felt nice 
One of the worst habits that human beings have is to watch, see the watch. It's so painful to me when I'm talking, people see the watch. I just can't bear it. Because now you are beyond time, beyond space. What are you going to do by saving time? What have you done so far? That shows your priority. Our priorities must change. And you can change them easily once you start enjoying. Once you have tasted the nectar of divine love, the Amruta, then you are not going to drink dirty water. But you first of all remember that, the joy that you enjoy. That is one way of fixing, so-called fixing your subtlety. It's the attention which gets covered by gross things of life, even in the emotional side of it. For example, you have relationships. We have seen some Sajogis being lost like that. They had some very gross relationships with people, even gurus and uh, some of them were friends and some other dirty relationships, you can say. And they couldn't give up and they are lost. So you have to sit down and find out, <coughs> why am I not enjoying myself? I am the loser. Because those things, if they were joy-giving, I would not have run towards them from one to another. They never satisfied me fully. So why to go back to them again? The emotional enjoyments whom you regard as something very important are also to be weighed in the new dimension of your attention and the subtleties. You consider somebody as your very near and dear and you have a business relationship or some sort of a, I don't know what sort of human relations people have. You must know that it is very superficial and you cannot have any joy out of it. Like you drink water from a cup. Now, the cup itself is superficial, the water is superficial. The most important thing is your tongue which can feel the water. If the tongue cannot feel the water and if the water feels like stones, What's the use of taking water? So the most important thing is the taste in the tongue, in the essence. In the same way, the essence of our enjoyment is the joy. And the joy is in feeling the vibration. So wherever you get the joy, you should have it. But this new awareness, is not so much gone into your being, that's why this is a problem. Otherwise, for human beings, it is not difficult to tell him that uh, this is nice to drink. He, he takes it and he knows it is nice. He won't eat something that is bitter. If you have to give him something horrible tasting, you'll have to give him chocolate first and chocolate later. But human beings, when they become evolved, I have seen that they are more prone towards these horrible things because of their previous uh, attractions. So, put your attention fully towards divine. Pull it out, completely towards it, so that there is no attention left towards the growth side. Even now, I find people coming and asking me, Vataji, I have a problem, I want a job, what should I do, My daughter, this is to be done, that is to be done. Of course, that is by the way, is all right. But if that attracts your attention, means you have lost sense of your understanding that you are a Sahaja Yogi and that your joy is in the subtler form and you can enjoy. 
So these gross things are never going to give you joy. So why not ask for something that is going to give you that subtle joy which you can enjoy. Only you can enjoy. So this is what happens to our attention. We get lost because of uh, our previous ideas and our emotional bindings. And we can also say that our spiritual binding, so called, we are Hindus, Muslims, Christians, uh, uh, we are uh, vegetarians, non vegetarians, we are, uh, uh, I don't know, we are Brahmins, non Brahmins, and all kinds of things we are. But we are not what we are. And all these things again also come back to you that we are Jain. So we are Jain, so we are very great people. You get me any Jain from anywhere or anyone from anywhere. Does he have this sense of vibration? Then how is it that person becomes your guru or that person can teach you about these things? You are now a master. Does the headmaster come and learn from the boys who are admitted in the school? I have seen even a newcomer who comes in, if he has a bada, he can entice away at least 5% of Sahaja Yogi easily. He will talk big, he will show off and he can bring some guru inside and 5% will run after that, minimum. How do you explain it? Only thing is that you should not be one of them. Everyone should think for oneself and not for others. You should think that this you are capable of or not. So in spiritual bindings also your attention is lost like that. And all these dimensions are outside. Now, in a description of Gokul, of Vrindavan, you must have read that when Krishna used to play his flute, all the women who were working, the gopis in the household would leave every work, everything, the milk would be boiling and they work was half done or full done, they were eating their food or in whatever pose they were sitting, they would just get up and run towards that mudli. And when they would go there, they would stand just like a picture, chitra vata se thari, just like a picture. No movement in the body, nothing, just standing and listening with full attention. What was so? He was not even speaking, just a murli being played and all of them just listening like a picture. What was it? The enjoyment that they were feeling, the enjoyment they were enjoying within themselves, the joy that was pouring into them with that murli. Just standing and listening, that's all. What is that? That is the subtleness of that enjoyment. Just like meditation, they would start. In the same way, your attention and mind should be on Sahaja, on your being one with God. You are one with God. Put your centrifugal force towards God completely. Put yourself in connection all the time with God and the rest of the work is done. Yantra work, just like instruments, the whole thing is start work. The human mind is used to do things in a ritual way, that they think that if you have to raise this house now, you have to dig the, first the foundation, then the pile, piling up and then you have those pillars and then you have to have the roof. And that is how one after another they plan out things. But in God's own kingdom there is no planning, 
She's just a doll and just enjoy. If your attention is there, all the work is done. Full attention. And then he takes out work and gives full priority to that. Do not compromise your way through. You have to help others also to come up. So, must remember, for that also your attention should be on your Atma, on your Spirit, on God. Completely one with Him in that joy. The whole heart is there and with your both hands and with your both feet. With all your attention you can pull out people because your attention is all the time fed, nurtured and looked after. Then you will enjoy also the lifting of the people. Nothing can be all right unless and until you develop the subtleties of your attention. <coughs> and they develop by, by receiving your attention from all that is gross. Receive your attention whenever it goes too much into any thought like that. Oh, forget it. But into vibrations you full, pay full attention. Seeing vibrations you pay full attention. Seeing your own vibrations pay full attention. Other things you need not worry. They will be all looked at. That is how your attention is subtler in the kingdom of God. The style is different. When the lotus is in the mud and it has to come out, it finds its way through many <coughs> crevices and many holes in that mud. But when it is out, out in the open, absolutely liberated, free, then he does not go on dashing here and there, but just opens out and receives the beautiful dew. And the dew melts the fragrance in the lotus. Automatically the fragrance starts growing. It's a different style altogether. It's a different method. It's a different way of life that is being Sahajan. Just whether you are sleeping, or you are awake, keep your attention